the hardest part for me of the journey was when I 50 miles out from New Lanark and I hit a wall where I couldn't carry on any further. My legs were like jelly, my arms couldn't move. I had to drink loads of water, fluids, and I got into the van and I realised what I was doing. I realised I was doing the wrong thing here. I should carry on and bear with it because my nan would be proud of me if I carried on and my little sister's out there still and I wanted to give my family proud. So that's why I carried on. The highlight for me over the whole expedition was the uh, certainly the second day. This was uh, the toughest day by a long way in, in cycling terms. Over 80 odd miles covered, probably a good 5,000 feet of climbing, uh, which by any stretch of the imagination was tough. The one young lady Sophie on that on the ride showed her true colours on that day. There was many a time when she had run out of energy, run out of go, run out of strength, but still found the great determination to see the day through. And it was it was nothing short of inspiration seeing what that young lady could produce when she needed to. Come on, Sophie! Come on! This is my younger sister Sophie, we call her the Lion Art. The reason we call her the Lion Art is because she's the only girl, number two, she's the heart of the team. Come on! Sophie. Come on. What was great about this project from CTC's point of view was the scale and ambition of it. It was far bigger than anything else that we've done this year. Uh, it was great to work in partnership uh, with organisations such as the Dukes uh, and the YMCA. Um, it was great to see all the hard work that we've done with the young people over the winter, all the training and everything coming together uh, and especially on the second day when everybody had to dig so deep. Uh, and the young people were able to achieve the goals that they set for themselves uh, for the trip. Waking up on the final day in a beautiful setting of Lamech, uh, it was a glorious morning, so we had a really great start to the day, had a great breakfast, and everyone just wrapped up and just said, this is a, you know, this is the final day, this is what we've been working towards, and everyone was on time and ready to go. Spirits were high as we pushed on the final 40 miles to Edinburgh. We stopped for lunch and we could almost see the finish line in our sights. The hardest part was now behind us. The challenge was nearly complete. There we go! There's the finish line, boys! Probably the most, most amazing feeling is crossing that finishing line. We've been, so, through, been through such a journey since January um, and we've experienced so many ups and downs and so many emotions. It was just superb to see how fit the young people were, how well knitted they were cycling uh, through, this, uh, through this finishing line. So um, an amazing feeling. 
We raced across the finish line on the fourth road bridge. We were here, we'd done it. Three days, 220 miles, we'd achieved it. The challenge was complete. complete. What a feeling. We were ecstatic, over the moon. Well done everybody. The reason I did the charity bike ride, it wasn't just for personal gain really, it was more or less because it was a local charity, it was disabled kids and I thought I'd put my bit back into the community and um, well I did get personal gain as well, not physically, well not just physically but both mentally as well and recently I went for an interview and the people interviewing me was curious about the bike ride, um, I told them about it and they wanted, to, they wanted someone that could say that they were committed 100% to working for them and everything. And I kind of helped prove that by showing how I got up every day, trained for this bike ride and also made it all the way to Scotland. Good luck, Chase. Well done, Jack. Nice you done, Andrew. From our point of view, this was the perfect sort of project for the YMCA to be involved in. It marries our two main programme areas of young people and physical activity, and most importantly, providing an innovative training package for young people, something that hopefully will go on to be a life-changing experience. Again, I think it was really important that this will then continue to be an annual event and something that we can hopefully encourage young people to give back to the community and keep on volunteering, keep on engaging with our respective organisations and developing themselves in line with the goals and ethos of the programme. From the Duke's perspective, we were really pleased with the Lancaster Youth Challenge. Uh, it was a real success for all of us and we hope that it becomes an annual programme of activity. Um, the Dukes are part of the LYC because it offers us the opportunity as a cultural provider to engage with young people who wouldn't normally come through our doors uh, and access the type of work that we can offer. Uh, we fundamentally believe that engagement in, in the arts and creativity uh, can have a life-changing effect and so by being part of similar projects such as this it allows us that opportunity to reach new young people uh, and to engage them uh, in positive creative endeavour. So Sophie, did you think you'll make it? No, that was start, but once I've done the second day because it was 80 miles, I thought I could do it. Well done, yeah. What's next then? Tower to Tower, Blackpool to Paris. Oh, 